238. 238. I'll ask our deacons once again, if they will, come, let's take up a amen's offering as it comes forth. I'd ask you to please stand. <coughs> Every bow in reverence of prayer, that's Brother Carl, that's the blessing on the offering. Uh, Father, we're thankful this evening for the opportunity to privilege to be in your house. And yeah, buddy. Your, Lord, for your church and for what it means to us, Father, and the great love that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for the service this morning. And our Father, for your blessings. And God, we pray this evening that you'd help us. We come together, we could humble our hearts and worship you. Lift Jesus up mm -hmm. that our people might have opportunity to come and be saved. And Father, just let your will be done in this service. Bless every effort. Bless this offering. It's intended use in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen.
Fellowship, one with another, have all the fun.
Thank the Lord for those good songs. I'm glad to be back in the Lord's house tonight. Appreciate everybody's come and uh, every visitor that we've got. And uh, considering the roads and the weather and the forecast, I just I'm thrilled with everybody's come out. I I I understand folks not trying it and and you know weather's bad and I understand folks not getting out, but I thank the Lord for the ones that's made it and it's here. And what a meeting we had this morning. Uh, it's, it's, it's blessed me. I've rejoiced and uh, lived through that meeting all day long. I appreciate it. It helped me. When the Lord moves and does things, it just helps you in ways that nothing else can. And I appreciate Denny Hunter preach for us this morning. Glad he's back tonight. Appreciate preacher Russ Stringfield and his family's come. Glad they're with us tonight. And, uh, I'm glad, uh, Denny's grandson got saved this morning. And, uh, so it's good to, good to be here. Now, uh, everybody has unspoken requests. Raise your hand. Anyone with a spoken request or testimony, say what's on your heart before we pray. If God give you something while you, you say that. Uh, Carrie, I've got a, a niece that's very, very bad with cancer. They're not expecting her to live. But I'd like to ask the church to pray for her. Amen. I love her too much. Remember that. Let's pray for this service tonight. I'd like to see somebody else get saved tonight. And uh, God's able. And uh, I mentioned the folks that were viewing the service on the live stream this morning. And there was a lot of them, I guess, more than we've ever had before. And, uh, of course, I don't know who all of them were, but I know some of them. One of them was preacher Shelby Money. And Shelby was planning on viewing tonight. Hello, Shelby Money. And uh, I love Brother Shelby. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you what he said when I talked to him. I said, you get to watch the service? He said, man, I sure did. He said, you talk about some something that will bring sunshine in your house. He said, doesn't matter what the weather's like outside. I said, you get in a meeting like that, so it will bring some sunshine in your house. And I, that blessed me. That stirred my heart. And so uh, I'm glad for everybody cheering. I, I, I want us to pray for conviction tonight. I want to pray for God to speak to people's hearts and uh, and pray for Brother Russ. I, when he come in, I grabbed him and said, Buddy, I'm glad you're here and looking forward to you preaching for us tonight. He said, well, I don't really have a lot on my heart. He said, I'd be happy if somebody else preached. I said, well, if you feel like it, we want you to preach and you follow the Lord. And so we appreciate uh, Russ and his family. Glad they're here. And let me say this. If you're here tonight and you're not where the Lord would have you to be, whether you're not saved or whether you're not in fellowship with God, and God speaks to your heart, or even if you're listening on the stream and God speaks to your heart, uh, you need to mind the Lord tonight. Any other requests before we pray? Amen. Nevertheless. Take deal. Anyone else? I would like to thank the church for the prayers of my parents. They're doing uh, much better, both of them. Wonderful. And uh, I, I have a special request. Lord knows all that. Remember that. Remember that. Remember <coughs> Anyone else? Papa, I'm, I'm thankful to be here. And I was thinking, uh, I'm glad that what I got is real. And sometimes when I tell people about the Lord, what he's talking, they won't fully understand because uh -huh. they've never experienced it. Right. But uh, I've experienced it. I, I know it's real, and I'm thankful for what I have. <laughs> Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Remember that. Pray for Elizabeth. She's found a little Baptist church that uh, uh, she likes to go to pretty good. And Blaine was just telling me that she'd gone this morning and that uh, she said she's planning on going back next week and she's going to try to get some of her friends to go. That just blessed my heart. I hope she can get them to go and hope something good happens. Anything else? Let's really pray for this service and pray for the preaching and pray for the need to cheer. I can feel that. Very bad impression to ask the church to uh, pray for my brother Charlie. <coughs> uh, 
they, uh, they have found a spot on his kidneys, and we won't know anything for sure, maybe tomorrow. But worse than that, as far as I know, he's never been saved. And, and I just pray that through this, I mean, sometimes, you know, even if you get a fear or a scare, right. it seems like God can get your attention on it. So right. I just ask you to pray for him. That's a great request and got wisdom in it. Remember that. Anyone else? If not, we want to go to Lord and pray. That's where Carl Atkins lead us. Let's keep praying. Pray for this service. Anyone feel like singing tonight? If you got a song on your heart, let's pray for Linda. pray for us. Um, Shelby Money sent me a request to sing a song tonight, but um, and I said I would try if the Lord would give me something, and so while I was praying I felt like that I should do that. So I know how I made it. I do know how I made it, Denny. Uh, nothing good that I've done, but just what the Lord did for me a long time ago, and he's kept me and he'll keep me. So I'm thankful. Pray for us. day in victory because of the one who lives in me I find every promise he ever made my Jesus will keep he's walked by my side in deserts dry he's held me and loved me when I cried so let me sing you one more song in case I leave I know how I made it I know how I made it I, I made, made it by grace steps that are I 
its children are leaving one by one passing this way and going home signs of the time reveal we don't have very long but each one who stands up on this shore waving goodbye as they rejoice glory to god they'll leave here singing this same sweet song i know how i made it said, I don't really mind it. I'm just closer home than I've ever been. I don't dread the trip home, Blaine. I got more to go to heaven for than I've ever realized before. If you're here tonight and you're not saved, you think about this. And if, if you're not saved, you need to get saved. So you can have that peace down inside. When you get saved, it changes you. Where you've had a burden and an anxiety and a, a, a heartache and all sorts of negative things down in your soul. When you get saved, it puts everything right. Listen to this song. More here 
I care to see there's such fear and sorrow on this side of Jordan so that trip it's looking sweeter to me Appreciate those good songs. Good to be here tonight. Anybody else have a song on your heart? If not, won't you give your undivided attention? Want you to pray as earnest as you can, Brother Russ? Come on. Let's pray for Brother Russ. Give me a minute. I get the microphone. On. Appreciate the service so far. It's been good to be here. I was over at uh, Continental just a few weeks ago. They asked me to come up and take care of service for them, and I just something I noticed uh, whenever I go somewhere like that. Uh, seems like I'm real excited at home when I'm getting ready about going to be with somebody. Get real close to the church, pull in the parking lot, start seeing the people. I get real humble. Real nervous. And then it seemed like without fail, Brother Denny, uh, the church will start moving. God will start moving. And there'll be just enough courage for me to get up when the time comes. Uh, without that, Brother Denny, I don't know what we'd do. I, I really don't know. Uh, I, I appreciate the church moving. Uh, uh, this is not just about a preacher standing up here before you. Uh, no preacher's got a service in his pocket and a, or a message, either one. It's Well, we just like to feel the, the church moving and the Lord moving through the church. And uh, uh, I thought about something else Denny said this morning. Uh, he said he wasn't interested in what they was preaching uh, the night that he got saved. Uh, I don't know what they was preaching the night I got saved either. <laughs> That's not really important, though. And uh, uh, I don't know what we'll read tonight, uh, uh, which way the Lord will go, but... Uh, I tell you what, if you're lost, uh, it don't matter what I read or what I say, if you're lost, you need to be saved. Uh, if you're not where God would have you to be, you need to take care of that. Uh, uh, don't say it's because the preacher wasn't preaching to the lost. There's no preaching to the lost. Uh, uh, there's just preaching to the church. That's the only ones that can accept it. Uh, uh, but we hope that the lost will benefit from that from time to time, though. So, uh, uh, church, we ask for your prayers tonight. And, uh, boy, it's just good to be here. We're awful nervous, but uh, uh, I believe the Lord will come by and help us out if we just call on Him. So uh, uh, we'll need your prayers. Let's read over here in Genesis. Let me find my place here. I've been thinking about this a little bit, uh, in the 19th chapter, we'll read a couple verses here and then maybe we'll get into talking about it or maybe not. So uh, Genesis 19 verse 12, and the men said unto Lot, hast thou any here besides, son-in-law and thy sons and thy daughters? 
And whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place, for we will destroy this place, because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord hath sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for the Lord will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his sons-in-law. That's all I feel like reading. Uh, maybe we'll get into that a little bit more. I don't know. But, uh, boy, I just stand up here and just watching the people move around. I, I appreciate the, the way God's blessed you all with your membership. Uh, I come over here tonight thinking about the, uh, the older folks. Uh, and when I say older, I mean that with the utmost of respect. That's not uh, in any way uh, derogatory or anything like that. Uh, uh, but I was seeing the younger people move around too and testify. Well, that's good. That's real good. I, I, I was thinking as I was growing up too, uh, I had a lot of the older folks uh, that I looked up to. Didn't always treat them the way that they ought to be treated, Terry. I, uh, just looking back, it seemed like, boy, I could have been a lot more help to them. Uh, uh, but you younger folks, uh, uh, you maybe had some times when you started to be interested in what was going on at the church. And I, and I say that, I was saved for a good ten years before I really got interested in what was going on at the church. I, I came every time the doors were open, but... Uh, uh, just a long time before I started paying attention, but uh, uh, maybe there'd be some trouble come up in the church. Uh, uh, maybe you'd start to get a little bit worried about it, but uh, uh, you'd just look around and say, uh, uh, Brother Billy Ray's on the job. <laughs> I don't have to worry about that. Uh, uh, Brother Denny's there, and he's going to take care of things, and, and I don't need to worry about that. Uh, uh, boy, how many times have we just taken for granted our elders and uh, uh, just realized and just sat back and relaxed because we knew that, uh, uh, that they were on the job. But, uh, and I appreciate that too. But uh, boy, let me say this too. When, uh, uh, years ago when they asked me if I would be a deacon at Faith Church, I, I said, no, I don't want to do that. Uh, uh, that's just way above me. I, that's not something I can handle. Uh, and then when God called me to preach, well, you can imagine how that went too. I, I didn't want nothing to do with that, but uh, uh, boy, the Lord began to show me uh, uh, somebody's got to step up and, and do the things that God wants them to do. And uh, uh, just think about this, you younger folks here at Lima Church, uh, if, if everything goes the way that it's supposed to, uh, uh, pretty soon these older folks are going to go home to be with the Lord. Uh, and you know what? The question is not uh, uh, who's going to fill their shoes. Uh, uh, you're going to fill fill their shoes. Uh, uh, the question is, uh, uh, what are you going to fill them with? You see, uh, boy, we need to take care of ourselves. Uh, uh, watch what we do in this life. Uh, I am not uh, uh, trying to tell anybody you got to work your way to heaven. Uh, it's not that way at all. But I tell you what, uh, uh, there's coming a time uh, uh, when you're going to have to step up uh, and fill in for some folks in this church. Uh, uh, God didn't put this church here uh, uh, just for Terry Brock to have some something to do. Uh, uh, he didn't put it here just for a few years. Uh, I fully believe it's God's intention that the gospel be preached from right here at this pulpit uh, uh, for many years to come. Uh, uh, just think about that for a while. Uh, watch yourselves. Uh, uh, take care of yourselves. The world says this is all right and that's okay, but God says it's not. Pay attention to God. Uh, uh, we read to you about the a lot there. That was Abraham's nephew. Uh, uh, there was a time when Abraham and Lot walked together, uh, but God blessed them fellows uh, so much uh, that they couldn't dwell together uh, anymore. Uh, Abraham told his nephew, he said, if you go to the left, I'll go to the right. If you go to the right, I'll go to the left. But it's just not good for us to, uh, to be together in strife like that we are. The Bible says that Lot... Uh, uh, look towards the plains of Sodom. Uh, 
Uh, he's seen over there a land that was well watered. Uh, uh, he's seen over there a place where he could feed his flocks. Uh, uh, he's seen over there a place where he could raise uh, uh, all his animals and everything would be good for him. Uh, what's wrong with that? I don't see anything wrong with it. If I had a bunch of animals, I'd be looking for that too. But uh, uh, buddy Lot never once asked God what he should do, you see. Uh, uh, Lot just went out on his own with his natural eyes. Uh, uh, he's seen that plane and said, that's where I'm going. Uh, and boy, it was a snare to him for the rest of his life. Uh, uh, that one time then, uh, uh, the angels came and said, we're going to destroy this place. Uh, a lot was sitting in the gate of the city like I believe all the old men always did. Uh, a uh, lot, I don't know what he was into. I, I don't know what he was guilty of doing, uh, uh, but he was approved everything that was going on in that wicked place uh, uh, just by staying there and just by living there. Uh, uh, he put his seal on it, you see. And uh, uh, boy, the angels come and said, uh, uh, we're going to destroy this place. Lot, uh, uh, when he seen him at the city, at the gate, uh, he said, come into my place and stay at my house tonight. Uh, boy, he didn't want him in that city at nighttime. Uh, uh, well, he knew what went on in that wicked place. Uh, uh, you know what those angels did? Uh, uh, they did just exactly what Lot asked them to. Uh, I wondered about that, Terry. Uh, why didn't they go through the city? Uh, why didn't they see what was going on for themselves? Uh, I tell you what, the one man in that city that knew God uh, uh, did not want them men in his place. Uh, that was all the evidence that they needed, wasn't it? Uh, they didn't need to see anything else. Uh, if, if Lot was ashamed of what was going on that was good enough for them uh, uh, so he said they're going to destroy that place and uh, uh, boy just pray for just a minute here uh, oh I think about Lot a lot in this uh, and you know the Bible doesn't say this but Lot was a preacher at least for that one time uh, uh, God told Lot uh, uh, go tell your brother your sons-in-law uh, uh, go tell your people I'm going to destroy this place uh, uh, go tell them to get to safety while they still can uh, uh, before it's too late uh, I tell you, and he went to him and told him the message that God gave him. Uh, uh, but the Bible says he seemed as one that mocked. Uh, uh, let me tell you, the message was real. Uh, the message was from God. Uh, uh, the message was serious. It was life and death. Uh, uh, but the messenger uh, had himself so caught up in the things of the world, uh, had no power whatsoever. Uh, oh no, we don't preach. Uh, uh, do things just such a way so you can get to heaven. Uh, or even that you can find favor with God. Uh, but I tell you what, uh, if you're going to have any power with your people, uh, uh, you better live the way that God says to live. Uh, uh, you better stay away from things that God says to stay away from. Uh, well, you cannot separate the message from the messenger. The message that Lot had was real. It was true and it was important. Uh, the delivery of it. Uh, the man that delivered it. Uh, that wasn't no good at all. Right. Had no power with his people uh, whatsoever. Uh, Lot raised his family up in the midst of some wickedness, some sin. Never once stood up against it that I ever read about. Uh, uh, approved of it. Uh, I think about this too. Uh, when they were leaving that wicked city, the angels told them, do not look back. Don't look back. Uh, Lot's wife couldn't help herself. Or she could help herself, uh, but she just didn't want to. She looked back. Uh, let me tell you, folks, uh, don't ever look back. There is nothing back there that you need to see. There is nothing back there of any value whatsoever. Uh, Brother Billy, we've been to some funerals, ain't we? I've been to some funerals where it was just a rejoicing thing. Uh, uh, they were just glad for their people because they'd gone on to be with the Lord. Uh, been to some other funerals too where it wasn't like that. Uh, uh, it was a grievous time. And, and boy, just nobody had any peace about them whatsoever. Uh, uh, whatever the case was, in both of those situations, uh, uh, them folks had to be buried. <laughs> It's important to bury the dead, you see. Uh, there's no work for him to do and there's no opportunity for him to be saved. Uh, yesterday, uh, yesterday is like one that's passed away. You know what? Yeah. Yeah, there's no more work for yesterday. Uh, there's no more opportunity to repent in yesterday. Uh, the only thing we can do with yesterday is bury it. Uh, that's where it needs to be at. Uh, don't look back. Uh, but anyway, uh, uh, they lost. Uh, they went that place. Uh, went up to the mountain. Uh, Lot had two daughters. It took out with him. Uh, raised up in that wicked city, in that wicked town, uh, by a father who wouldn't stand against uh, uh, what was evil. 
desired to do something good for their daddy. There was no people around for him to have babies. There was nobody to give him children. Desired to do something good for their dad. He'd raised them up in such a wicked manner, they had no idea what good was. You know what they'd done? They, they got their daddy drunk. They laid with him, got pregnant, and had babies. They thought that was good. They thought that was going to help their dad. They had their babies. Some of the wickedest men that the Bible ever tells about. I had no idea. I just didn't, I didn't have any idea between right and wrong. I wanted to do something good, and that's what they ended up doing. I tell you what, uh, raise your people in church. Uh, after you get done raising them in church, or, or however you want to say that, uh, raise them up at home the way that God would have you to. Uh, people, keep yourselves out of the world. You're not going to get any favors with God that way. You're not going to be any bigger in God's eyes. But I tell you what, when you tell your people uh, to flee from the death that's to come, they'll hear it. They'll believe it then. They'll listen to it. So Brother Terry, that's all I felt like sharing tonight. I, I appreciate the opportunities to stand before you. I really didn't think I'd be getting up tonight when we came out this way, but I uh, just felt a little bit of encouragement as the church started moving. So we'll turn it over to Terry. I appreciate Brother Russ, and I appreciate the message. And a couple of things that's real outstanding to me in the message. When he was talking about the young people needs to get in and get involved because the old people are not going to be here forever. We don't know how long we're going to be here, but nature teaches that the old folks is moving out. And if you've never noticed that, just watch a day or two, and you can see that. It ties right in with something I read earlier today. As a matter of fact, when I was texting Crystal back and forth, I shared that scripture with us and some of the things we was talking about. I can't remember all the names, but over in the book of Kings, it came a time that the king of Judah and the king of Israel and the prophet was getting ready to move out. God told the old prophet Elijah, he told him who to go anoint to serve in the stead of the man that was the king. He told him the fellow to go, uh, that was of Judah, and he told him to go anoint the fellow that was going to serve in the stead of the king of Israel. And then, this was kind of interesting, the way he said this. And he said, go and anoint Elisha to serve in your room. So there's a job that God's give you if you've been saved by the grace of God. A room for you to occupy and uh, God has got people to do what he needs done. Uh, but I'll tell you, and this makes me sad, there are so many that don't seem to be doing it. And then he got down there and he talked, this is another thing that just stood with me from the message. He talked about Lot. His words didn't have much meaning to his sons-in-law. They just mocked him. You, you, you preached that clearly. i tell you what. Listen to me just a minute. We'll have an invitation. I remember when I was a teenage boy and I got out of fellowship with God. And I thought I'll just do things my own way. And I remember sitting in the back, toward the back of the church house one time and the preacher was preaching and he'd uh, preach some to the lost and preach some to the church and and uh, I was just kind of trying to toughen myself up I'm not going to let it show but I I had an uncle it was I thought he was lost and uh, my heart began to ache for my uncle and I I thought Lord I I see I wasn't in fellowship but I thought Lord I wish I'd like for my uncle to get saved God twisted my heart he said if you'd get in and do right you'd help your uncle where you at, you can't help him. I want to be in a place where I can help people. And and uh, the old devil will tell you you can't help anybody, but uh, just what Russ has preached tonight, if we'll do what we're supposed to, we can help somebody. And I repeat this real often. Brother Siegel Newport, he preached, and he said in his message, he said, when I come down to the time to cross that big river, Brother Danny said, don't want people guessing where I've gone. I want to leave something behind. 
Listen tonight. Are you going to leave anything good behind? Let's stand tonight. Let's sing. I believe there's somebody here that needs to get in and needs to occupy the room that God's got for you. Uh, needs to uh, exercise the gifts that God's given you. Get the blessings God's got for you. Let God help you tonight. And you can be a help to somebody else. I'm telling you, if you, there was a woman, wait just before you sing, I'll tell you this. A woman came to me one time. This many years ago. Matter of fact, I wasn't even pastoring here. And she said, I want you to pray for my boys. And I said, are you praying for them? She said, I ain't shaped to pray for them, but I want you to pray for them. I said, I'll try to pray. But Brother Andy, he grieved my heart. I said, I can't do your job. I can pray from where I stand, but you need to pray from where you stand. Get in your room where God's got for you. Sing when you get ready. Somebody needs to come and get in tonight. Good things will happen if you mind the Lord. I appreciate the message. Would you obey the Lord? Somebody needs to get in tonight. Let God bless you. Let God help you. And then you can help somebody else. You've got to get help before you can be helped. Before you can help others. Mind the Lord. Would there be one come? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? If you if you haven't been, you need to be. And if you have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, you need to be acting like it. Live for Jesus. Amen. Good song. I'm going to ask him to get another song. And I'm going to make a request and make an invitation that I have made before, but I don't remember making it in a long time, somehow or other. And just I'm going to explain it in just a little bit. We'll sing again when we do. I'm going to stand right down here in the front. And I want Brother Russ to come over and stand on this side of me. I want Brother Denny to come over and stand on this side of me. And I want you to really pray. When God speaks to our hearts, it's not just something that's, oh well. God means business and every call that God makes is important. Every opportunity is serious and important. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do tonight. If for some reason you haven't gotten uh, satisfied in your mind that it's ready or time for you to come to the altar and pray, or maybe you've resisted the call, and you, you just know that you've resisted it, but I'm going to ask you to just do this. Even if you're not ready or willing to come and stay at the altar and pray, as, as we preachers, as we stand down here, you that have a need in your life and God's let you recognize it, I'm going to ask you to do this. I'm going to ask you to step out from wherever that you're at. Just come up and shake our hands, at least one of us or all of us hands. You can turn and go right back to your seat. But I believe that would be a step in the right direction for you. And, and I believe it will stir the heart of the church. Uh, and I believe God will help us to pray for you even the more. And now understand, we won't try to hang on to your persuade you to stay and pray. Of course, if you get up here and you make up your mind to stay, you still can. You're welcome. But I, I just want you to think about what's at stake. And will you just make this much of a move toward the Lord while we sing? Obey the Lord. Somebody needs to come. Just come give your hand. 
You can go back to your seat. Nobody will try to hold you. No, we're not. We're not trying to embarrass you. But just do something. It's time to do something. Do a little something. Make an effort. Make a little effort. Just do something. It won't hurt you. Pray, church. Somebody needs to move so bad. Would you just come? Just come shake hands. Why go back to your seat? Nobody will make fun of you. Nobody will try to hang on to you. Oh, listen to that good song. Would you just come? God will help you get in your place. You don't have to fit yourself in. God will fit you in when you're willing. That's what's good about the Lord. We got a good God. He loves us so much. Please come. Come on. Just come give your hand. If you want to go back to your seat, go on. Or if you decide to stay, you're welcome. But just do what you feel like. But do something. Would you come? Come on. It's your move. God gives a call and it's your move. Whoever God's calling, it's your move. Please come. a story in newspaper maybe just this past week and it was so sweet and it was so sad and it was touching there was a little eight-year-old boy discovered people in the house burning and the little eight-year-old boy went in and started getting the people out he got six or seven people out of the house and he went back in to get one more and he got overcome with the smoke and he died in the fire and that's a precious story that's just a natural story. It kind of stirs the heart. But they're calling him a hero, and I'd say that's well-deserved. He's a, he's a great hero. But, you know, on the spiritual side of things, you think about if we're saved by the grace of God and we see the need of those around us, we ought to give all of our effort as a saved person. We ought to give all of our effort in trying to help rescue those that are in need and see people that are spiritually in trouble that are lost they're a lot worse shape than somebody that's in a house burning if that person's saved what about where you're at tonight if you're a lost person you need to get saved you need to get out of that burning house comparing it like if you're saved you need to be part of the effort rescuing folks they're in danger i'm telling you i'm glad some folks reached out to me one time god reached out through the church brother roy and offered me a hand talks about that lady in the bible reaches out a she's a virtuous woman that's talking about the church spiritually reaches out her hand to the poor and the needy god reached down through the church and reached out that big hand of love and mercy to me while they sing tonight if you're here and lost or out of fellowship with God, or if you need to join this church, please come while they sing. Please obey the Lord.
do something, take a step the right direction, find the Lord. It's time. That's just you can do it. God help you. God's spirit works. Thank God for what I feel. Thank God for what I feel tonight. Thank God for what I feel inside. I know my God is real. Do you know it's real? I can feel you can know it. If you know it, live for it. Folks, I'll be free from all sorrow. Yeah, when I read that's God's children she's singing about. Side, my treasure, if you're not saved, you're still gonna die, wonder, but you'll have to go down. In a land of perfect love.
I appreciate the meeting, the singing. Are you home? Let me have my dad's funeral. I don't know if my dad was saved. Bless the Lord. It, it just breaks, it breaks my heart every day. Yeah. When I think about it. Bless you. So we're here. I mean, we're all going to die. Amen. I so glad my funeral, you can tell them that I went to heaven. Yeah. You yeah. don't want to for yourself. <laughs> you move for the people that love you because. Yeah. That's a wonderful and powerful testimony. And uh, the greatest thing you can do for your family is let them know that you're saved. And uh, when I got saved, the devil fought me. He said, don't tell it. And that was on Saturday night. I didn't tell it, but next morning I did. And I felt so relieved when I told it. Uh, it, was just, it was just like I felt anguish over not telling it. I needed to tell it. And the Bible said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. I needed to tell it. And when I told it, it helped me. But I'm sure when I told it, it helps some other folks too. And so when we follow the Lord and we do what God said, it not only helps us, it helps other people too. There might be somebody here tonight that's saved, that's never really told it, need to tell it. You ought to stand up and be counted. Uh, you'll never regret following the Lord. I've got a lot of regrets in my life, but none of my regrets are because of something I did for the Lord. It's when I didn't do something for the Lord where my regrets come in at. Now, anybody got anything on your heart? Something else to say? That's a great testimony. Anyone else? Well, it's good for us to be here tonight, and I appreciate everybody that's been part of this service. Everybody cheer. Thank the Lord for you, for our visitors. And thank the Lord for you. Appreciate Brother Russ. Appreciate him preaching. Appreciate the singing. God's give us a good day. If nothing else, we'll soon come to close, but we will remind our, our uh, brothers that uh, we have our brotherhood meeting tonight. We just meet over here for a little bit, maybe, and uh, discuss upcoming things, maybe talk about some things. So, anybody else got anything? I really appreciate being here tonight. Amen. I put on this journey to be a help to one another, mm -hmm. and it would be hard for me to live a Christian life yeah. if I had to do it by myself. Yeah. And, but I'm True. thankful for the Christian friends that I have and the family that I have, yeah. and that helps me along yeah. to get through through this life. And mm -hmm. you know, it's what Russ preached tonight. You know, it's we're here to be a help and not a hindrance. I appreciate being here. Amen. That's good testimony. Appreciate that. Any others? If not, we'll ask everybody to see the stand. As we bow our heads in reverence and prayer, Dylan, will you pray dismissal prayer? Clear out the Father, thank you for another day to be here today. Need another relative by the Lord. Being the Lord's house today. Thank you for what we feel today, Lord. Just keep everyone safe on the way back home. We'll see each other here one day. Amen. Good, buddy.